Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Soul Horizons Tarot. I'm going to be doing a love reading for the sign of Pisces. Um, I do pick the signs at random. So this is for who is my person, my forever person. Uh, you could say soulmate. I don't really like to say soulmate because we have many, some of them. Uh, you know, we don't have intimate relationships with. Um, but basically, like, who who are you meant to be with? Um, now, keep in mind, this is a general reading, so this will not apply or resonate for everyone out there. Um, this can be for singles who are wondering, you know, who the next person is or who they need to watch out for as far as... Um, the traits and personalities and possibly even the timing of meeting this person as well as people that are already coupled and they just want confirmation um, or <clears throat> you're unhappy in your relationship and you don't know if this is your person um, so just keep that in mind if you do want a personal reading all that information is below in the description box um, I Usually, well, I was doing a part one and part two because my readings are really long. Um, but with this, it's just a little complicated to do one card at a time. So I'm doing the whole thing. It will probably be a longer read. But hey, uh, some people out there appreciate that. And the more followers I get over time, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm only going to attract a certain crowd that I guess likes this kind of reading and I will do shorter readings like mini readings but I know that uh, a lot of people watch tarot for love readings so we're going to get into this um the first uh, the first card also signs and gender in tarot is uh it's not exactly irrelevant it's just take it with a grain of salt because I may or may not say the sign of your person or you and you may be a man uh, or a woman. I just say the gender of the person in the card. So, and and uh, you know, sexual orientation is it's not relevant either. Um, some may be in a same-sex relationship. All right. So the first placement is who is your person. Um, now keep in mind the, very, the card in the very middle is the main pool and the cards to the side and these down below are clarifiers just to give a little bit more information. So we first pulled up the Ten of Swords. So your person is probably in the midst of a very difficult loss or um, they're going through a pretty tough time. They may have they may still be in that process, like going through it right now, or they may have just gotten out of it because the tens can represent completion. Um, we do have the sign of cancer here. Um, may or may not be relevant to you. But the ten of swords is a heavy defeat, a heavy loss. Um, now, I can read this several different ways, and because this is general, I mean, even if it wasn't general, a personal reading would be, you'd have to get more than one uh, representation of the person because there's a lot of stories you can read here. So a couple of the things I felt here, um, we have the chariot and the six of cups. Now there may be children involved on your side or on their side because the six of cups can represent children. But it can also represent a soulmate. It can represent um, past, anything to do with past. It's usually like happy memories, childhood, um, nostalgia. Um, and then the chariot is a card of victory and success. Moving, it can represent literal travel, spiritual travel, um, things being in balance, or the need for it. 
So one of the things I saw here was that your person may be going through maybe a divorce or maybe they have been divorced from their children. Maybe they have been separated. Um, they may have lost some type of battle when it came, like a legal battle when it came to their children. Um, I say that because we have the gavel down here. I do want to go ahead and clarify uh, just to see what that Ten of Swords might represent. Maybe it'll narrow it down for some of you. Please clarify this Ten of oh, Ten of Cups, yeah. So that can be a card of family. It is emotional fulfillment. Um, but definitely this could uh, affirm or reaffirm that this person did have a family or at least children. Well, you'd have to have a family first. Well, I guess everybody's experience is a little bit different. But the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Swords, this would be a loss of something that was emotional, emotionally fulfilling at one time. There was, there could have been a family that suffered in some way. Um, now, again, this person could be currently experiencing this, or this is something that they just came out of. This is something that's very um, resonant for them. Uh, even if it happened a year or more ago, it's just something that they carry with them and it still hurts them a great deal. Um, another thing that I thought, uh, based on other cards that I saw here, let me go ahead and move that to the side just because it already did its job in clarifying. Um, some of your people, some your person may be a healer of some kind, especially maybe a child therapist, a child psychologist. Um, to be very specific, a child that has suffered abuse. And I don't want to trigger anyone out there. Um, and I don't really, I don't want to go into too much detail, but you do have a card here that could you know, pinpoint what kind of abuse. That's just a side story. Uh, we have a couple cards throughout that, that could, could talk about somebody who is a healer. Um, but your person could also be a traveler, um, like a literal travel. They travel for work. Um, maybe they just enjoy traveling. Um, they like to experience different cultures. Um, they don't really have a home per se in the sense that they drift or they just, they like to travel basically. Um, that 10 of swords is a pretty heavy energy. So this is something that you will find out about this person. Um, and it, like I said, it, it will be, it will resonate for them very strongly, whatever this loss was. And for some of you, like I said, it's going to represent um, a family situation, a child, uh, maybe separation again from a child. Down here we have these. Um, for some of you, you will be dealing with a man with dark complexion or hair. Um, then we have rabbit. And this says too much concern with sexual matters. So your person may have at one time, um, you know, put too much focus on that. And another aspect of that could, could be that this individual has several children or, um, you know, they weren't responsible when it came to that in there when they were younger. And that might be some of this burden here is now they're, they're reaping the consequence. Not, not that children are, are, you know, Uh, bad or <laughs> they're not a burden. Well, they, a good parent won't see them as burdens. Yes, they can be burdensome, 
but I think you know what I'm trying to say. The burden of their irresponsibility. Perhaps they can't provide for them in the way they should or want to. Um, but again, that, that kind of goes back into what I was saying earlier. Some of these uh, other cards that represented maybe a, a possible healer, um, a therapist, a counselor of some kind, this may play into what kind of abuse they deal with. Um, they could be they could work. We do have involvement with the law. Now, for definitely this could, I don't know why I'm showing you that card. It, you can't really see it. Um, this definitely could represent that some of these people, I keep saying some of these people, this person may have had dealings with the law in the past. Um, possibly that Ten of Swords could have been a period in their life where they did suffer because of, you know, poor choices. Um, but also going in line with what I was saying, a healer or a counselor, a therapist, this is somebody that could work as, um, you know, an advocate for a child and for the state. So child protective services or something of that kind or something of that nature, um, they could, their career could directly involve um, protecting children. Uh, you know, with the chariot there, this would be like searching for a home for a, a child after they were neglected or, you know, if they were orphans or if they were in a situation where there was abuse. Um, but the obviously the most prevalent card here would be that Ten of Swords. So again, somebody is struggling here. And again, I don't know if this is a current thing they're going through or they're already past this, but it's still, it still affects them and still influences them in some way. Um, this could also be a person that doesn't take obstacles or hardships very well, but I don't feel that because well, you'll see as we go. Um, but yeah, again, some of you, it may be somebody who travels a lot. Very literal um, interpretation could be that they've recently lost the ability to travel. Uh, maybe they, they lost their vehicle or something like that. But um, so, yeah. A man with dark complexion or hair uh, came out here. So some of you that, that may resonate um, definitely or, or confirm if you're dealing with that person and this sounds familiar. Uh, some of you won't know this person yet. So just keep an eye out for that. So let's move on to will the attraction be instant? And I would love to say yes here, but it does feel like there is some hesitation on somebody's end. And I went back and forth on whose side it was. And honestly, I don't know. Um, but I do feel like there may be a choice involved as far as, I don't know if there's more than one person in the picture and they both equally have their pros and cons, uh, whether that's you that have more than one option or they do. It could also be, we do have the chariot that shows up twice. This could be a long distance thing. And it's a choice of, you know, investing. We have the seven of pentacles here. They don't know if they want to invest the time, the energy, the money, the travel to, or you. Uh, you don't know if you want to do that with them. Um, this could be that you meet online with the two of wands. But the two of wands is a card about choice. I mean, wands are passion. So it's not that I don't think you'll be instantly attracted. It, I do because, again, wands do represent passion, especially um, physical attraction um, and desire. But there is that seven of pentacles that asks, you know, is this worth investing in? Is this something that I want to put my energy and I want to um, nurture 
and then we have the Wheel of Fortune. So again, it comes back to kind of like that back and forth energy. Um, and there are some cards about feeling conflicted. So I feel like it swings from one extreme to the other or from one person to the other. Like, who should I choose? Which road should I or which path should I um, follow? Uh, the Two of Wands is a crossroads decision, an action that needs to be taken. Um, the Wheel of Fortune can also be a very faded energy. It can be something that's kind of out of your control. Um, but it, it can also be lucky. It can be unlucky or it can be lucky. Um, but I feel more so that it, it's kind of like just a just a, con a conflict, like an inner conflict of what what to do here. But as far as will there be instant attraction, I think it there will be, especially on the physical sense. But I do think again there is going to be some reservations here. Uh, they possibly could tie back to this Ten of Swords, you know, if they, especially if they're, they're if this is a current thing that they're going through when you meet, or just the trauma or the negativity or the response that they had from it was so um, powerful that they're not sure if they want to invest. And again, this could be you, or it could be a mutual kind of energy. You both might kind of question um, this connection. Now we have hat. You will be playing a different role. So what I think that means, especially with the seven of pentacles, is like you're going to be or they are going to be in a certain stage of their life where either things are set in motion and with that will of fortune, meeting this person or them meeting you is going to kind of shake things up. It's going to like throw a curveball. So they're, say they're, you know, they're in school um, trying to finish their degree, or you are, or they're on, you know, a trajectory in their career where they, you know, they want to get to a certain position, or they're in the midst of moving, or you are, just different scenarios here where you've got this objective, this mission, and then you're not really thinking about love or commitment or they just switch those roles um, as necessary. Um, but you're going to be in a different place. You're both going to be kind of a, in a different place, physically, mentally, emotionally, uh, maybe even spiritually. And you're not sure that you're, or they are not sure that they are in the right place for this, which comes back to that two of wands. And then we have Mule. Someone is extremely stubborn and unwilling to change. So that kind of plays back into that back and forth. Like, I don't know what to do. I don't know which path. Where do I go? How do I make the right decision? Um, obviously, if this is your person, they're eventually going to get <laughs> to that. But being this is where, is there going to be a physical attraction? That might be something that says... Uh, kind of a turn off. Uh, we all have different reactions. Like I've I've heard so many stories where you know two people meet and they're not even sure they like each other, and then they end up getting married once they you know once they get to know each other. So it might be an aspect of this person, or it might be an aspect of you. Um, you know they they see you as really stubborn, or you see them as very hard headed. And it's kind of like, do I really want to invest in somebody that I don't feel like is, is going to compromise with me? Or, you know, they it's always their way and I don't feel like, you know, trying to fight somebody. Um, so then we have skull. Hidden secrets can harm you. Now, that can play in different ways. Um, and the first one that I thought of was if there is more than one indiv individual, that might be an aspect of this. Like, 
maybe somebody is playing the field initially, like they go on dates with both people and there's nothing wrong with that, right? If you're not committed and you haven't like uh, made yourself, um, you haven't had that conversation where, okay, this, this is what I want. I want to be in a relationship. I want to commit to you. I want monogamy, blah, blah, blah. It might be kind of like feeling deceived. Um, but then again, it could also be like one of you is not being open or transparent about their feelings when it comes to their hesitation to get involved. And they might like phone it in at first, or you might phone it in stubbornly. <laughs> You might not like, <sighs> let's say you meet and you're in a different place in your life, but you also really like this person, but you don't think you'll be able to commit to them because you've got all this other stuff going on um, and you're not open with them about it. You don't, you don't express that. You don't say, hey, look, I've got this and this that I'm trying to achieve. Um, you just kind of allow the relationship to, you know, you get you get in a relationship, but you don't really, um, you're not honest, completely honest about where your expectations are, or maybe that their expectations are not where yours are, if that makes sense. Obviously, this also could play back into their, you know, difficult past. Um, so I think that's just a, a warning here to, to make sure that you're, you're upfront about your own motivations, your own intentions, or you need to be mindful that this is a possibility on their end. Um, if you feel like they're distant or they're not, uh, cooperating, uh, they're not, they don't seem to be connecting in a way that feels you know, mutual, mutual, um, this may be why they may be conflicted and just not sharing that with you. So, um, let's move on to, as far as the question, will there, the, the attraction be instant physically? Definitely. But there are some, some strong reservations here and you or they Whoever side this is on, possibly again, even mutually, it's kind of a curveball, unexpected, twist of fate kind of meeting. Um, now, for those of you out there, this very well could be that you two have already, this could be an X read that Wheel of Fortune can represent a cycle. And the reason you're trying to, you're conflicted or you, you don't know which path to choose or which decision to make, maybe because you've already invested in this before. Um, that's that's not as strong as a, uh, a story, if you will, as the others. The main one being definitely there's some, there is some uh, difficulty in trying to decide if this thing is worth pursuing. Right for for whoever's, I don't know who's in that is th that is on. So moving on to what is your person like? So this is where it got pretty interesting. We got the. Uh, do we miss any signs over there? We have the Wheel of Fortune, which is in any of the fixed signs. So Aquarius, uh, Leo, Taurus, and Scorpio. And I always get the Wheel of Fortune and the world mixed up. I think the Wheel of Fortune is Sagittarius energy and the world is Capricorn. But like I said, I get those confused. Um, so yeah, the we have Pisces here with the High Priestess. We have Cancer again. Um, so very watery so far. Uh, but again, don't don't take that to heart because signs are not as important as the energy. So what is this person like? With the high priestess, they can be 
or appear to be secretive. But I feel with the um, with the card of uh, the chariot here beside it, I feel like this person is actually pretty spiritually evolved. Um, they may have some psychic abilities. They may not. They may or may not be aware of it. They may have like just. Um, they like maybe they dream and they're like their dreams are like premonitions. Um, maybe they're just really good at knowing or f like reading the room, but it's more of a feeling the room. They pick up on other per people's energies. Um, this is a very intuitive and perceptive card. Um, this is literally the card of intuition and higher knowing, higher understanding. Um, but it's not vocal about it. It's very subconscious. Or if it is conscious, it's private. Um, so I feel like, it's, like I said, especially with the, the card of the chariot here, which can be a card of spiritual ascension, spiritual travel, spiritual, um, like expanding your knowledge and, and traveling through, uh, you know, higher meaning. This person could be very spiritual, uh, very intuitive, very empathic. And again, another aspect of the high priestess is a healer is, you know, when we say healer, that can be a spiritual healer, that can be a, a counselor, a therapist, uh, a teacher of some kind, um, a doctor even, uh, or doctor, nurse. Um, so they, they very well, very way, oh my goodness, I can speak, very well may be um, a healer of of some kind, possibly even like a missionary. <laughs> if you think about the high priestess and the chariot, and the chariot is a card of travel. So somebody who spreads their knowledge and brings peace or brings healing or, um, yes. And, and then, I mean, even if they're not super spiritual, um, they're still good at understanding uh, emotion, experience, human experience, um, and they they may have a lot of really good insights uh, because they have experienced this this you know pain. And this might be just this could could be more than just one experience. They could have had a lifetime full of these kinds of experiences. Okay, so with that. If that's the case, this person may just be very evolved when it comes to understanding uh, pain and where to put it and how to get past it. So this is a good combination to have here. However, we do have the Four of Pentacles. I just want to show that to you because it's, I mean, you, you should always, especially if you're getting a personal face-to-face -face reading, you should always look at the cards because sometimes little things will pop out at you and it's it's not a great camera that I'm using so it's not going to um, focus at least the program that I'm using because I have to use uh, Bluetooth. But uh, we've got a guy with tattoos. Um, he's got a gun and a sword. He's a pirate. No, I am using the uh, ocean the underwater deck, something like that, aquatic deck maybe. So all of these bigger cards are ocean themed. Um, so yeah, he's got tattoos, he's got a key around his neck, he's got a sword and a gun, so maybe he, he owns a gun, I don't know, maybe he's got some tattoos. Um, but the four of, four of Pentacles is, is somebody that could be very good at uh, saving money. They're very responsible when it comes to you know, what they invest in, what they save, what they spend. Um, the Four of Pentacles is also a card of, it can be a selfish card, a stubborn card for sure. Um, somebody that is not quick to open up. The High Priestess can kind of be like that, but usually, you know, being mature, especially emotionally mature, the High Priestess um, wouldn't be 
normally guarded and she's not like unapproachable. Uh, but that may be an aspect of this person. Uh, somewhat guarded, somewhat hard to to be vulnerable. Um, but more more so than anything, when I look at this card, I see somebody that wants to protect, especially the things maybe that they've earned in life, whether that's money or whether that's like material things. Um, but I also see that as like reputation. They want to protect their reputation. They want to protect um, their sense of security, their sense of self. Um, I feel like having experienced this, they don't ever want to go back there again. So they do take on that kind of characteristic of, you know, not just anybody will I allow into my peace. I won't, I won't disturb my peace for just anyone. Um, and that's what I feel the strongest here because I do feel a sense of somebody who is very, maybe a little bit secretive. That would make sense with the four pentacles and the high priestess together, but they're also very emotionally, um, intelligent. They're not like toxic closed off they're just wise closed off if that makes sense so it's kind of interesting too that we got the dolphin right under this one which has the water theme and the skeleton fish um, but it says financial gain usually coming from something you did in the past so here's that card of the past um, this is a card again like i said protection protection over finances, wealth, um, resources, material things. Uh, so I do feel like this person wants to protect what they have, what they've earned, what, what they've worked hard for. Um, and I do feel like this person has worked hard to get where they are. Because the high priestess, she doesn't phone things in. Um, and then we have teardrops. So this comes back to the beginning. Great personal sorrow. So through the sorrow that they have endured or experienced, they have come into the high priestess, which is the ability to help others master, but they have, they have self-mastery over their, their own inner workings, their own inner world. Um, but they can also guide others through that as well. Um, and again, they could very well be a grief counselor or something of that nature. And then we have wedge. Someone is trying to come between you and a friend or something you want. So kind of back to this, wanting to protect. Um, but that aspect's like out of control, that can create a wedge. Maybe that's what that skull is. Um, again, this might be such a private and personal loss or um, collection or, uh, you know, things that keep on happening that this person maybe they don't share it and so when people experience them when they when they uh, interact with them they don't understand where this kind of energy like i'll interact with you but you will never know me like there's there's people out there that you can work alongside or live beside and have conversations every day but you don't know anything about them you know their name you know, obviously where they live, if they're your neighbor, but you don't know, you know, much else. Um, and then if they are a traveler, that could, that could be what that is. If they travel a lot, that could create um, a difficulty in meeting people and, well, not meeting people, you would meet a lot of people, but having, um, long-lasting or like really truly intimate connection and i don't mean intimate as in you know sex but where you know a person on a deeper level so i think the great personal sorrow is part of the wedge here um 
but I think it's just because they have a responsibility and a very high one uh, for themselves and their sense of peace. They are that evolved. Okay, so these I feel I feel positive about this. To be honest, I feel positive, and the more I go through this reading. Um, and I've already gone through it kind of to get it, give myself a heads up, but I do feel like maybe you are the less certain. Well, no, you, you'll both share that. We'll get, well, never mind, we'll get there. Okay, so weaknesses or challenges with it, or weaknesses that will create challenges within the relationship. So I kind of have a mess here. Um, we have the two fives. We have... The Five of Wands and the Five of Swords. We have the Page of Cups and the Page of Swords. Definitely could involve children. Either you have them, they have them, you both have them. It's kind of a mixed bag there. But we do have two fives here, and that can, I mean, that's just confirmation. Fives, the number five in numerology talks about challenges, obstacles, um, change, difficulty. Um, and, and the need for, uh, you know, resolving that. So with the Five of Wands, this can talk about conflict, um, inner conflict or external. So, again, flip this as necessary. One or the both of you may be very self or internally conflicted, or one of the or the both of you may be in an environment where there is a lot of conflict, a lot of drama, a lot of um, a lot of people that kind of stir up trouble. Not five of wands isn't usually a toxic card. It can become toxic though. If not kept in control, the Five of Wands can become the Five of Swords, actually. I mean, you don't usually jump suits, but the Five of Wands is usually kind of... It can be playful, even. But obviously, this is a challenge. Uh, so I don't think it's a playful thing. I think it's kind of... It can be like, you guys... Once you get involved with each other... You may fight about little silly things a lot. You may have a lot of petty disagreements, squabbling, bickering. Um, that kind of creates uh, tension within the relationship. Another aspect of this card can be, you know, a lot of interference from outside parties. That could be on both your ends, like family members or friends or um, maybe ex-partners that, like, cause this drama, this gossip. Um, and then one more aspect of the Five of Wands can be jealousy. Because the card, the Five of Wands is a card of competitiveness. To be competitive, competitive. it's usually like kind of like a sportsmanship-like thing. Uh, it's not usually like taken seriously but in this sense somebody could be kind of a jealous person um their partner whether that's you or them could receive a lot of attention and that kind of puts the other partner on edge uh we do have this card with <laughs> the four of pentacles so they may be a bit possessive they may be a bit uh, overprotective but i don't think it's in a toxic manner um I'm going to be honest here, whether it's you or them, somebody, and I, I, with the cards I've seen so far, I mean, they do have the Six of Cups, so maybe they are a bit childish. Um, but I don't feel that as strongly as I might feel uh, on your end, because we do have, I forget any signs, no. Um, we do have the Page of Cups, which came out, and I clarified it with the Page of Swords. So the Page of Cups is actually the card of Pisces. So I think this is on your end, and please don't, like, hate me forever. Um, you know, click off. I'm, I'm just here to, you know, I, I'm not, like, calling you out and trying to make you feel bad about yourself. We all have our 
uh, our weaknesses, our um, challenges. We can be challenging even if, you know, we're perfect. To somebody out there, we're imperfect. Um, and there's no such thing as perfection anyway. Um, but then we have the Five of Swords. The Five of Swords is a card of literal conflict. So that's why I felt like the Five of Wands, if not kept in check, can turn into that Five of Swords. Okay. Um, I do feel like because of what was clarified here, and, and you know, flip it if, if you're not this way, if you're not, you know, a little immature, if you don't fly off the handle when you get upset, uh, just be honest with yourself. Like, if you don't have those traits, then it's not you. Uh, the other person might be, or this is not your reading. Um, but the Five of Swords is a card about conflict. This is ego. This is... Um, you know, no resolution conflict where nobody wins. There's no winners in this, in this card, in this um, version of conflict. This is the type of arguments where, you know, you'd rather see somebody walk out of your life forever than admit or acknowledge you were wrong. This is a card of pride. Um, but as a challenge or weakness, this is something where Somebody might have a real hard time saying they're sorry or admitting that they were wrong or stirs up trouble just to get a reaction because they're a little bit immature and that's how they seek um, validation or they seek, you know, they want to be sure that the other person's going to stick around so they test them. What happens when I do this? What happens when I say that? Um, so there is a little bit of immaturity here just because we started with the five of wands and we ended with these two pages. Now, again, I mean, another aspect of this could be if one of you or the other of you has children, the children may cause conflict. Um, now, not to say that it's the kid's fault, but it could be like you have completely different ways of raising a child or beliefs on how a child should be raised. Um, the ex person that you have the child with could be a part of the problem. Like you can't enjoy a Sunday dinner with your boyfriend, husband, lover, because ex baby mama, you know, she has to constantly feel like she's in control and she wants to call every five minutes when the kids are there and interfere with your family time. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but if this is you with the Pisces card, uh, we also have Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Um, then this this can talk about somebody that, that um, you know, they don't think things through when they're, when they're triggered or they're, they're met with what they feel is confrontation or accusation. Uh, they just, they just go off. From an, and it comes from an emotional place. Um, they react out of emotion. So whether you or them, this is kind of an immature way to communicate. More than anything, it's, it, it's an immature way to communicate. Now, there is very good aspects about the Page of Cups, but this is a challenge. So sincerity is called into question. Not that you or they are insincere about their feelings, more so um, when it comes to conflict, one or the other might just apologize just, just to make it go away. But I really don't feel that as much as I do just somebody like, um, they say something a little bit off to you and you don't speak to them for the next two days. That's that's an immature way to handle things. Um, and I do feel like it's communication because that's what the Page of Swords is. That's communication. There also may be some stalking involved. We did have a card that can represent jealousy. So maybe you like interfere in their privacy to figure out, you know, if you've got to worry about them or they do that to you. Um, I won't say that that can't be them. 
but it did feel with these cards down here that these this person is emotionally uh, matured. It doesn't necessarily have to mean maybe when you guys get together, something about you or the relationship kind of triggers them and puts them back in that space and, and they go off instead of you. Maybe you both kind of have that reaction to each other. So we'll I'm taking too long. Let's do these. Conflict though, okay? Conflict that could lead to things being said that can't be unsaid. And that can be a pretty big problem. You need to find a way to express yourselves in a way that you can properly communicate and still resolve the issue. Um, so yeah. Ink pot problems to be resolved. So that's uh, that's an issue. It was definitely that five of swords, that five of wands, not coming to uh, a consensus or a happy medium. Uh, nobody wants. To, we did have the mule. Remember, somebody is extremely stubborn and unwilling to change. So one of you may struggle with that more than the other, or you both may uh, uh, struggle with that. Harp, great happiness. Okay. And then candle, you will be shown the way. So as long as you come into this with an open heart, let me show you this card. She's a little girl with the cup and the wave is rolling in behind her. And that conflict could be the wave that catches her and, and you know, pulls her into the riptide. But if you are open to it, if you are sincere, if you are understanding, uh, that's the aspects of the, the Page of Cups when they are grown, when they are matured, when they are grounded, is the Queen of Cups. So great happiness comes, you will be shown the way. So you have to remain open to that. Um, and then we have now, this fell under, these two fell together. So that came under this one, the Five of Wands. There is a way out of this kind of energy uh, conflict. Um, kind of uh, everybody wants to have the last word and nobody wants to, um, you know, be the one to let go first or apologize first. There is a way out of that you will be shown the way. Um, and that might be several different ways. I'm not going to spend too much time. But then underneath the page of wands, or excuse me, the page of cups and the page of swords, this comes back to that two of wands. You had the dark man show up down here for who this person is, but we also have a fair man showing up here. Dealings or relationships with a man with blonde, gray, or white hair. Now, this could be the same individual, but since this is a either dark-haired or dark-complected man, it's pretty rare for a dark-complected man, unless he's a, a much older man, to have blonde, gray, or white hair, unless he dyed his hair. Um, so I do feel like this is a separate individual. And then getting together with friends, if that is a jealousy thing, somebody could be jealous about who this person is dealing with. Um, now, I just got these cards, so I'm not sure if you can keep these gender, ex, uh, ex, uh, you know, where it could represent a fair woman. It could be, but... I guess this would just, you'd have to keep an open mind there. Um, I feel like this is a jealousy thing, but I also feel like, well, you could read this two ways. Maybe that's the way you will be shown, the, you will be shown the way. It could be that a fair man who is a friend kind of helps you both in some manner, but I feel like this is a, an outside person that could also cause this jealousy. Um, now keep in mind, actually, you know, if I'm gonna be um, fair, you could be, oh, 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 you could be in a same-sex relationship. So that's a, that's a, a possibility. 
Oh, sorry. Cards flopping off the table. Um so yeah, if if there's a jealousy aspect, there could be some there could be a reason for them to be jealous though cuz we did have that two of wands back here and that can again represent a choice between options, between people, between paths. Um but if I'm being honest with the two pages, I mean, it does feel like another person. And they may be a friend, but it may be causing conflict within the relationship. Or that's the first, my my gut reaction to that. It could, for others of you, it could be that this friend who is a fair man or woman, but um, I feel like it's probably a man, um, could show you how to resolve this a counselor um, uh, couples couples therapy kind of thing I don't know let's move on now I don't want to spend all night uh, hopefully keep it under an hour but all right so those are the, the weaknesses these are the strengths of the relationship and honestly this one kind of confused me a little bit but I think I figured it out um, we have uh, the Two of Swords, the what is this? this yeah, the Six of Pentacles, and the Five of Cups. So we're looking at strengths, where you are strong within the relationship. And again, if you are single and you haven't met this person, this is future. Like in the future, these could be some of your strengths. If this resonates for that person. Um, if you're coupled, again, this will just confirm, okay, yeah, that makes sense. So the Two of Swords is a card about um, choice. Uh, but this is indecision. This is inaction. And usually it is self-inflicted. It's choosing not to look at something, choosing not to see something, choosing not to make a decision, choosing not to act on something or think about it. Uh, now, how is that a strength? I feel like with this card being in the strength position, there will come a time, maybe with, um, well, yeah, with time, but with also experience of this person, when you figure out how to choose your battles. Instead of all this uh, dramatic uh you know back and forth arguing bickering um nitpicking maybe maybe it's even a nagging energy like you guys kind of nag at each other at some point you will get to the the position where you can just choose not to take part in that um and i do think that will be a mutual thing where you can let bygones be bygones, you can uh, allow the other person, you know, like basically where you get to that point where like, uh, we agree to disagree. There may be some things um, that you guys cannot come to an agreement on uh, in certain aspects. And, and you know, you, you, uh, you're, you're, you're fine with that. You become fine with that. Um, the Two of Swords can be a card of Libra. Twos can also represent balance. So I do feel, and the Six of Pentacles can also is a card about balance. So I do feel like, even though this is a danger and it is a challenge, there's also a strength um, for you guys to find balance again. You always, like, it may tip to one side or the other, but you always come back out level. Um, and the Six of Pentacles, you know, six, six, no, that's a seven. We got four. I believe Chariot is a six. Yeah, five. No, that's a seven. This is third two. We have any more sixes? No, no, I guess not. So it's not a super prominent number here. Um, I was going to say six is a card of harmony and balance. I mean, six of pentacles is balance, but 
Anyway, it's also equal give and take. It's a card of uh, reciprocity. You know, what you put in, you also get back. Um, and, you know, that's something that you struggled with back here. It's like, will I get out of it what I put in? Should I invest in this? Well, this is telling you six of pentacles. Yes, you will get um, equality. You will get that re uh, reciprocated energy. Um, it's also a card of uh, charity, um, kindness, uh, you know, some, somebody be, being very give, giving. Um, being of service. So you equally, not only within the relationship, but to each other, you make each other feel like safe as far as I know even on my down days, this person is still going to be there for me. They're still going to put in uh, the effort and that is one of your strengths. And then down, over here we have the five of cups and I didn't really understand that one either. Um, I don't read reversals so maybe reading in the strength position you would reverse this meaning where it's like letting go and that kind of plays into this like yeah letting water uh, that's that's water under the bridge. The five of cups is also a card about um, you know things from the past too so it may come back into play like allowing things to the past be the past. So once again, I know probably a lot of people don't want to hear this, or maybe even some of you do, but don't take it to heart unless this and this already resonated. If this already sounded like a person you know, then it's very likely that that is that person. Um, this could be a past relationship for some of you with the Five of Cups, because this is a past card. It's also a card about loss, remorse, guilt, shame, sorrow, um, specifically about the past. But it really didn't make sense until I looked at the Two of Swords as choosing your battles. So allowing things, uh, letting things go when they no longer, like there's, there's no sense in putting energy into this. Let's just, you know, come together um, and choose to get past this but it made even more sense when I drew these cards so well, let's look at these tankard celebration fun enjoyment so that's good oh and another aspect of this card before I move on is like I don't know if you can see it she's in a rowboat on both sides of the oar, she's got like a piece of cake over here. She's got a piece of cake on the other side of the oar. It's weird. Um, but it's completely level. Um, the oar is, and it's, you know, so level that the cake's not sliding off. And then we've got like a little piece of rope that is, it's like a hangman's knot, but it's falling into the water. And if you can see in the water, there's like these hands sticking out. So... I'm assuming this person was like referencing the river of six. So maybe one of you feels like this person was a godsend. This person, uh, you know, kind of like my lifesaver when I thought I was drowning. Maybe when you meet this person, they're in that 10 of swords and you kind of pull them out of that or vice versa. But anyway, tankard, celebration, fun, enjoyment. Sorry, when I moved this card, I, I saw that and remembered that image. Uh, you guys will have fun together. You may even, well, this is a strength, so I won't say that. It could be that, well, yeah, because that's there. You may meet at a celebration, a party, um, a reunion of some kind with the tankard, but you guys will have fun together. Money will be coming to you. Um, a strong energy I got here throughout the reading, especially later on. Uh, as we continue, I feel like you guys will be pretty financially secure. Um, and I, I kind of feel like it's on this person's end. Uh, not to say that you won't have your own financial independence, but I, I feel like this person, uh, if they don't already have uh, decent income or de decent savings, then they will. Or the both of you will be very good at 
balancing out the checkbooks with the two of swords. You'll be good at saving money together. Uh, but financially, I feel like you'll be secure. So that's a good thing. Finances is kind of one of those. Uh, it can cause breakups for sure. Um, and then we have Vulture, which is really funny that it fell under the five of uh, cups. Because that is a card about depression, anxiety, worry that someone is against you. Now, again, how is that a strength? We got the five of the cups, which can be a card about loss, sorrow, guilt. We got depression, anxiety, and worry. So this is can be a card of worry based on past experience. I'm worried. Um, so how is that a strength? Then we have ladder, climbing towards success. Now, when I saw that, the first thing I thought was maybe somebody's anxiety and worry and fear is actually... <sighs> This sounds so silly saying it out loud. It made sense in my head. But maybe that actually is the reason why your coins are good. If that makes sense. Like, remember back here, I said this can be somebody that can be a bit of a hoarder or, you know, they're very good at saving their money. To the extreme, they can be selfish. They can be kind of a, a what do you call that? A, a penny pincher. There's another word for it, though. This person may be that type of individual that's like, you know, no, no, cancel all the subscriptions. No more, you know, no more dining out three times a week. Um, no more Starbucks. Stop getting your nails done. Like it might be annoying to a, to a small. Maybe that's what the fighting is about. I don't I don't know, but it feels like because of their um, their anxiety over it or yours, it could be on your end, but I feel like it's on theirs. Uh, that actually leads to the success, at least the financial success of this relationship. I don't know that that will help them with their anxiety over it, but I do feel like it at least takes that weight off of the, the or it takes, you know, you don't have to worry about a strain on the relationship as far as, as money goes. But maintaining balance within the relationship is a strong thing here. And the ability to let things go that, that, you know, that are wasteful, especially grudges, past arguments. It's like being able to mutually uh, allow that to not be something that, you know, constantly is an issue. Like somebody that, you know, you had a fight last week and you, you you hold a grudge on them or they hold a grudge against you. It's no, we, we've got to resolve this. We've got to get past this so we can get back to the same page. All right, so let's move on to when, where, or how will you meet? I pulled the card for October. Keep in mind, this is general. So this, it, it could be last October. Maybe you already met this person. It could be next October. Um, so that's the month that I drew. Um, it could even be, let's see, did I miss any? No. Uh, it could be um, October, October, October. That'll be uh, Scorpio and Sagittarius doesn't start in October. I believe it starts starts in November. So what else starts in o Libra? Libra. So it could be a Libra person or it could be a, a Scorpio. Uh, we do have a lot of water here already. We had Cancer, Pisces, um, got a couple other signs, but anyway, we got the Four of Swords, the Ten of Wands, and the Seven of Swords. So definitely one of you or the both of you. And well, this one is how, when, where, or how will you meet? They had the Ten of Swords. I believe this is on your end, but don't take my, like, take this with a grain of salt. I just, I feel like this is on your end. They're going through hardship. The way I feel is that 
they are with the chariot and the chariot here, I feel like they have moved past that. Not that it doesn't affect them anymore. It does, but they've also moved on since then and they've grown and they've learned and they've matured because of it. I think you will meet when you are on your rock bottom or not maybe your rock bottom, that that's pretty severe, but when you're going through a tough time, this was their rock bottom or their, you know, heavy loss, defeat. Um, and I, I feel like this is yours. It could be that you meet them when they're at their going through this. Um, just keep that in mind. Uh, but the Four of Swords is a period of rest, uh, a period of solitude. It's usually like choosing to um, isolate yourself. Hold on one second. I think my little one might be waking up. I apologize in advance if he is, because I'm going to have to go over there. Um, but yeah, so you go through your Ten of Wands, which is, you know, maybe being overworked or overburdened, um, being physically, mentally, emotionally exhausted, maybe even ill. This could be an aspect of this down here. They could have had surgery, specifically back surgery. Um, could have been a period where they were very, 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 very unwell. But that could be the Ten of Wands too. The Ten of Wands can be like a physical ailment of some kind. This would be more like mental, uh, like mental breakdown, deep depression, uh, etc. Doesn't have to be, but. Anyway, the Ten of Wands, if you can see this card, let me try to. All right, so it's a woman and she's crawling on her hands and knees. The The wands are like coral, but she's, it, this is an ocean deck. This is like the ocean has all dried up. She's crawling through like this oasis, <laughs> this desert, this barren wasteland. And she's. You know, the Ten of Wands is a card about um, perseverance. Like, it's having the strength and fortitude to continue on, even though you're at that breaking point. So I feel like the Ten of Wands, you might have reached that breaking point, or you came very, very, very close to it. And, and then when you meet this person, you or they... But I feel, again, I feel like it's you. You are in a period where you are finally resting or you're finally getting a break. You're getting a breather. You may have chosen to take a sabbatical silently without telling anyone Seven of Swords. Um, but you're doing it to recuperate, especially if it was some type of physical um, injury uh, or just, you know, being overworked, overburdened. Um, it's, it's a, it's a burden, a heavy, heavy burden, one that you probably chose, but maybe you didn't know. The full extent of what it was going to take from you. I do want to clarify this seven of swords. I feel like this is kind of like a secret of like going along with that, going along with that, um, self, uh, you know, isolate, isolating, but choosing to isolate yourself. Maybe you, you know, turned off your cell phone and went on a mini vacation. Maybe you just refused to answer the phone for a while. Let me, let me, let me ask first, please. A page of cups uh, repeated there. Why is the seven of swords here for when, where, or how? When, where, or how? Okay. We got the four of uh, wands, the eight. Okay, so that makes sense. And then this one kind of fell out of my hand. I don't know if I want to take it. It's the ace of swords. So yeah, it could start with a, a communication. <laughs> Shit usually does, right? Relationships aren't like mutes. Uh, running around pantomiming everything. Let's play charades. I like you, 
love. Um, this could also represent a cancer because there's a crab. So yeah, this person or you may be a cancer. We've got Leo. Um, we don't really count the signs of uh, minor arcana, or at least I don't. But anyway, I think this is like, you may be in like, uh, <laughs> you kind of quarantined yourself at your house. You're, you're self-isolating at your house, your home. Um, and this, this comes in pretty quickly. Again, back to that Wheel of Fortune, something unexpected, something that just kind of uh, is a curveball, a surprise, a twist, a, you know, uh, what do they call that when they, uh, plot twist. And that may be what that Seven of Swords is. Then it's like something completely unexpected. You didn't know this was coming. This person seemingly snuck into your life. Like they took the back door. Uh, you forgot you locked it. And they, that's creepy. Where did I, where am I going with that? But I feel like this is just quick, quick and coming. And I do feel like that Seven of Swords is, is also talking about how you may not be reachable right now, either via communication, um, you know, just, just taking a period of rest and solitude, uh, quiet. I need quiet. I need, I need peace. I need, um, privacy. And, and somebody may come in with that ace of swords that I'm not sure belongs there, but I'm going to take anyway. Uh, somebody just starts out a simple conversation and, you know, here's my truth. I, uh, I'm interested. So it comes back to me feeling like you are the conflicted one in this scenario. It doesn't have to be. Roles can be reversed here. This is a general read. All right. So, um, and it's funny, you had the candle, which says you will be shown the way. And now we have angel coming back to faded. We've got a couple soulmate. Uh, six of six of uh, cups can represent a soulmate. Uh, the angel, so maybe one of your guardian angels here. Spiritual guidance, protection from harm. So even though you're going through this, you are being spiritually divinely protected. Um, something or someone is watching over you, whether you believe in God or angels or spirits or what have you, whether or not you believe in that, you are in some way being protected. You don't have to name it, but it's there. Um, you don't have to believe in it, but it's there. I'm not saying, um, oh, never mind. Anyway, mountain, major challenges to overcome. So this may be pretty exhausting to the point of like, I don't see the end of this uh, in your eyes or theirs. Or you both, you both might meet at a time which could, again, come back to this, uh, you will be playing a different role. I kind of get that feeling like you're in a weird place in your life. Uh, you, you may both be in a period of your life where things are just like mounting that, surpassing it is, is almost like unthought of or it just seems insurmountable. Um, but then we have fan, romance, celebration, party. So again, I feel like this kind of sneaks into your life. It's it's unexpected. It's unforeseen. Um, and hell, maybe that is it's really literal and you decide to sneak off and take a trip and you meet this person by chance in uh, like a, a bar or something like that. I wouldn't recommend going to a bar to meet your the love of your life, but hey. Where do things have happened? Uh, maybe you go to a rave. I don't know. Um, but that's okay. Oh, and also, you have the four. So that could be the fourth month, four days, four weeks, four months. Uh, swords would be days, weeks. So that could be four weeks. The Ten of Wands could, I mean, we could look at this a couple different ways. Uh, four weeks. Ten of Wands, that would be days, uh, ten days. It could be the fourth month on the tenth day. I mean, just throwing out some stuff there. 
it could be October. We do have the 10 here, October. So 10, maybe October 4th or October 7th. Um, so yeah, just kind of maybe narrow it down for some of you. The 7th would be July, but that's a, that's a clarifier. Okay, so four weeks, four months, uh, and then October, maybe maybe October fourth um, or seventh or even tenth. Okay, moving on to the the overall quality of the relationship. Gosh, I thought this was the last one. I need to speed this up. Overall quality of the relationship. So we have the Death card, Scorpio. We have the Two of Cups, great. We have the Sun card. Fantastic Leo energy there. So Scorpio talks about again, one of you or the other of you may be going through something incredibly transformative, difficult, transformative, maybe uh, scary. Um, but the super interesting thing I noticed while I was looking at these cards when I pulled them, and it's really cool in my mind. I really wish this would zoom in. Okay, so we've got death on the white horse, yes. And then down here, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little boy and he's offering the offering death, the reaper, um, a bouquet of white flowers. Now, white flowers represent virtue, innocence, um, but it's a child offering something that should be scary, a gift, right? Uh, there's a more abstract meaning that I'm going for here. Death represents change, transformation, rebirth. Um, so this relationship will be transformative. There may be a lot of big changes that come out of this relationship or that call for major changes in order to get this sun card. But if you notice the sun, we have another little boy. So again, one of you, both of you may have a child. This could also represent that you will have a child. But it's it looks like, if you could look at this card in close up, this child looks like this child, little boy with like a bob, bob cut, blonde hair. Um, but yeah, this same horse, like, well, maybe not, but it's, uh, it's also a white horse. So it's like this change brings in joy, freedom, liberation, happiness, um, a childlike, innocent, um, and I don't think your, your relationship will be innocent. It'll just bring a lot of happiness, a lot of happiness, um, you know, celebration, fun, enjoyment for the strengths. So that's reaffirmed here with the sun. The sun is one of the happiest and luckiest cards in tarot. I think the other one, the star is really lucky. The chariot is really good, uh, but that's on their end. We do have the two of cups, another, another card that can represent um, a soulmate. It's a little bit lower on the tier, but it just shows that there is a equal emotional partnership. And that comes back to that Six of Pentacles balance and harmony. Okay, so there's emotional connection here. Um, and though there may be, it may be transformative and there may be a lot of death and rebirth within the relationship, it's it brings in so much freedom and happiness with the sun. So basically it's like that song, was it Blue, Blue Oyster Cult, Don't Fear the Reaper? Da, 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 da. I'm not gonna sing because I'm terrible at it, but we have star, guaranteed success. When I say the star was the luckiest in tarot, you got star and the tea leaf. Guaranteed success. Scales, keep your life in balance. So another card of balance. So even in those times of change, remember I said with the two of swords, 
you know, you'll be willing to let things go in order to create that balance again with Six of Pentacles. So this is all starting to make sense. That's what I love about tarot. Things things are a little bit confusing, and the more you go, the more the further you advance. It's like, ah, oh, okay. And then nest an emotionally secure, loving family is important to you. So there will be emotional security. There will be love, but there could also definitely be um, family. Now, if you don't want children, whatever, you still have family. Your, your person becomes your family. Their family becomes your family. But if you're wanting to have children, if you don't have children, and or they don't, or you both do, and you still want more, this is saying yes. If you're looking to have children, this is a confirmation. Again, this is a general read, so don't read too much into it, um, but at least emotional secure, security and love is guaranteed success here with this particular person. Now, how they look, how they see, feel, and think about you. We have the hermit. That's why I feel like this is you. They see you as the hermit. You're in a period of like being isolated, being secluded, secluding yourself. So they see you as the hermit, but the hermit is a major arcana. That is Virgo energy, by the way. We have two cards that could represent Virgo. You could be a Virgo, they could be a Virgo, doesn't matter. Um, but another thing I feel like in this card comes back to that protection. I feel like this person wants to guide you I feel like this person wants to protect you because they also see you as this five of wands, somebody very conflicted, somebody that may be dealing with a lot of um, dramatic, gossipy, possibly ill-intended people like shady or uh, questionable characters. Not that that may not be true, but I feel like they feel like they need to guide you out of that or they need to guide you in a way. The hermit is, no, I'm sorry, the, the hierophant is the divine partner of the high priest, but these are very similar energies. This is like the male version of the high priestess in the sense that this, this person guides people out of the dark. Um, this is also going within, but this is how they see or feel or think about you. So they may also see you as an individual that's very wise, very capable of seeing yourself out of bad situations, a uh, very capable individual as far as like knowing when it's time to, yeah, hold on.
Sorry about that. He likes to wake up multiple times a night. Um, so yeah, I'm seeing you as a wise individual, but also wanting to possibly help you out of a tough situation, help you out of a tough environment, possibly with other people that maybe mean you or what they perceive as meaning you um, harm or just distracting you from what they feel is with this Nine of Pentacles, a very creative, um, capable, confident, and I mean, the Nine, the nine of Pentacles is the, the minor arcana to the Empress. So this is the mother, this is the wife, this is, usually this is seen as the singles card. <laughs> So it could be that they see you as somebody they got to snatch up away from all these other um, possible suitors. But how they see and uh, see you or think about you and even feel about you is that they want to create with you. They want to create, um, yes, uh, financial independence, financial security, but they also want to create um, something long lasting with you and they want to see you grow and flourish um, into the woman that they they think of you as um, this this is a I'm super attracted to you card so there is a lot of attraction um, and there is emotion here as well so it's not all just lust uh, they are very attracted to you though and I feel like they know that you have potential other people you could be with um and they they know that you're capable of you know protecting yourself or getting what you want or deserve out of life but they also want to be the person that you feel safe with and the person that um you know kind of i guess guides you through the dark the dark times or the uncertain the uncertainties because this is supposed to be what they see think or feel of you but I also see it as how they want to be seen or felt about if that makes sense I, I, that's the first time I've felt like that's their energy in yours um, but they also see you as somebody that's very wise and mature and capable of you know getting yourself out of situations too so it's not like they they see you as this weak and fragile and it's not like they see you as this uh damsel in distress it's just they want to be that for you they want to protect you they want to nurture you they want to love you and they want to see you grow uh so that's that's good um, so why I thought this was other people that they felt might be in your life. It could even be, you know, that you're, you, you are yourself very conflicted. You may have a hard time settling on one decision, but it does say mice. It does say discord among friends or family. So they may see you, um, attached to people that they think are not helping you and maybe possibly even distracting or, uh, causing you grief or getting in the way of what, again, what they think you're capable of. Now, this may be confirmation for some of you. Dark woman, a dealings or relationship with a woman with dark complexion or hair. So if you have, or if you are dark complected or if you have dark hair, this may just be like, oh, okay, so this reading is for me. I am, I am dealing with or I do know a dark, dark complected or dark haired man. Um, but this is general. So um, it doesn't mean that this reading is not for you. If other cards have resonated strongly for you, then I would say it's still a relevant reading. Uh, but the, the woman is a goal oriented person. So again, that echoes, they see you as very capable. Um, and they do see you as the hermit. They do see you very wise. Um, and, you know, also 
with that. This is somebody that helps people. So you, in turn, definitely could be somebody that shows them something um, that they had never thought of or considered before. You know, that you are the light house. Lighthouse, yeah. There's a ship over here. There's a ship, and it's pointed towards the hermit, which he is. He is the lighthouse. He is the person that we seek. Like he's usually internal wisdom that we we um, we go within to find out answers, to, to seek out our own wisdom. But it can also be somebody that that helps us. It can be a, a counselor or uh, you know a figure a wise and trusted figure, um, a priest, uh, a teacher of some sort, a mentor. So I hadn't considered that before. They may see you as uh, somebody that, that teaches them too. So while you learn from them, they also learn from you. And that kind of just realized that in the back of this card, we have a lighthouse. And I just felt very strongly and clearly some of you that might be another confirmation for some of you if lighthouse is somehow symbolic to you um and then last one is dog protection from a powerful friend so again that's where i got you know they, they want to protect you um and well well they see me as a friend or they see themselves as my friend that's you but you know, you have to establish a friendship with somebody in order to know that you actually have something. Um, if you're just getting together based on superficial or even, you know, emotional or logical, uh, like it just makes sense to be with this person, then chances are your connection is going to be kind of 2D with a friendship, a deep friendship. And then you add in, you know, the attraction, the physical attraction. And then you add in the fact that you feel loved and supported by this person. That's that's a strong relationship. So Pisces, that is your reading. Um, overall, very good. We've got some stuff over here that's a little, you know, it could be, if not dealt with and addressed, it could be something that, you know, could lead to the bad part of the Two of Swords and the Five of Cups. You could miss out on this opportunity with this person if you do not allow yourself to be open to a new way of communicating. Now, not to point the finger at you, it could be the other person. If they choose not to communicate properly with you um, and, you know, all the other things things that you try don't work, then, then, I mean, you can only do so much, but I do feel like with a lot of these cards, um, I mean, we've got guaranteed success with the sun. I mean, there's a lot of cards here that, that show this is a very strong and potentially lifelong relationship um so yeah if you liked this reading please leave a like um share or uh please feel free to uh leave a comment i love hearing back from you guys um uh I felt like there was something else I was supposed to say. I'm sorry. It's it's already like two o'clock, I think, in the morning. I'm tired. Um, yeah. If you want a personal reading, my details are in the. Oh my, it's in the detail box below. Um, yeah. This is for the sign of Pisces, and uh, I'm gonna shut up because I'm I'm just spinning in circles right now. Like literally not 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 making any progress. Uh, you guys have a great night. Thank you so much for giving me your time. And I hope to see you next time.